was 17 I ran away from home and from everything I had ever known I was sick and tired Living in a town filled with narrow minds and hate Hello, 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 and thank you so much for tuning in to A Spoonful of Comfort. I am Claudine Jackson. I am your host for A Spoonful of Comfort. And when I started this show, I thought I could give comfort and share places where you could get comfort because we have to encourage ourselves. But considering what the world is going through now with the virus and the protests, We have to encourage ourselves daily, hourly. We have to encourage ourselves because we're not getting encouragement from our leaders, from where we're supposed to get encouragement. So I hope that you are remembering to encourage yourself, and I hope that you're staying encouraged. We need more than a spoonful of comfort. We need a whole waterfall of comfort. And I'm praying that you are still enjoying life. You know, when I think about all the problems that are going on and all the uh, obstacles that are placed in our way, we are still alive. We still have life to live. And having life to live means we have to do all the things of living. Shopping, cooking, um, although I retired from cooking, housework, different, we have living things to do. So if we remember that we have these living things to do, and those of you who have younger children, uh, I know you can't forget that you have living things to do because you have, have to stay busy. I'm so thankful that all of my children are grown. I have uh, four adult children, nine grandchildren, and three great-grands. So you know I'm ancient. I have three uh, grandsons who are uh, part of the military. I have a grandson who's an Iraqi war veteran, Um, another grandson who was a special operations uh, person with the Navy, and then another one who is uh, in charge of Army Reserves. So uh, I have lived a beautiful, long life, and I am so thankful. And I am thankful that God has let me get to be 81 and still have energy and uh, still can function. Although uh, at 81, I did not want to have the fear that the pandemic brought to me. But here we go to the scriptures. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. Another one of our scriptures, for God goeth before us. I think that's in Deuteronomy. God goeth before us and protects us. And I have to keep reminding myself of this because uh, Romans 8.18 says, the sufferings of the present day are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. Now, if we believe the words of the scriptures, it helps. It really helps us to comfort ourselves and to uh, comfort others, which is uh, what God put us here to do. But I tell you, I never expected the trials, and I've had trials and tribulations. I never expected these kind of trials and tribulations because I was the one that said, well, plagues and pestilence can't happen in the United States because we have brilliant scientists, brilliant doctors, medical advances, and I just really thought that we could handle whatever came along. Well, lo and behold, here comes something that is stretching everyone. And um, so I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're wearing your mask. I hope you're uh, keeping your hand sanitizer or your hands washed. And I also hope you're looking out for your health because um, 
you want to be healthy. You know, I've talked about the things that keep us healthy, eating uh, proper uh, nutritious food, which I have to get better at. I'm doing better at eating fruits and vegetables, eating less fried food, not eating as many sweets. And when I'm talking to you, I'm also talking to me. Uh, exercise, a good diet, good exercise, drinking a lot of water. They say that if you drink a lot of water, it washes your impurities out. Plus, the blood needs the, the liquid to move uh, to help with your circulation. So please consider your health. Now, I will admit that until I reached the age of 50, I wasn't really concerned about health. But it's never too late. When, uh, when I turned 50 and started back, my, my physical fitness of choice is yoga. If you do yoga, and if you do yoga, Yoga is good for me because it's uh, not high impact. But whatever it is that's physical fitness for you, we have to keep ourselves healthy so that we don't catch the virus. And that if we do, we can fight it off better. I, I never expected to be having this kind of conversation. So uh, I'm still scared, but God has not given us the spirit of fear. So if you have time, my show, A Spoonful of Comfort, is based on my blog, A Spoonful of Comfort. A Spoonful of Comfort uh, is the minimum amount of comfort. Everybody has a spoonful of comfort. So my blog is a spoonfulofcomfort.org. If you get a chance, go to a spoonfulofcomfort.org and um, read some of the entries that I have in my blog. I want to read, um, share some poems from my first book, Let There Be Light, because um, this book came out. I don't talk about this book much because it's not for sale anymore. Uh, I don't have any more copies of it. But I want to share with you a poem from this book called Guess Where I Found God, because we sure have to rely on God. I've always uh, relied on God, and I've always um, read his promises and prayed and uh, listened to gospel music and read the uh, scriptures to keep me motivated. And... I, I will say that at age 81, I have been through so many trials and tribulations in life, uh, but God has brought me through. God says that if we believe in him, he'll pull us through. So we've got to believe that he'll pull us through this one. This poem that I want to read is called Guess Where I Found God. And I wrote, this is in my first book, Let There Be Light. Guess Where I Found God. I found him in the mountains. And in the rising sun, I found him in the sunset when the day was done. I found him in the rivers and in the waterfalls and in the mighty oceans and in the trees so tall. These trees, they die each winter, but then they're born again. And that same rebirth can happen for women and for men. I found him in the churches and in the singing choir. I even found him in my living room beside a quiet fire. I found him in the words that I read and in nature's mystery. God's fingerprints are everywhere if we but choose to see. I found God in beauty. I found God in love and in peace and harmony and the moon and the stars above. I found him in a quiet place. I even found him in suffering and sorrow. I found him in the hope that we will have a bright tomorrow. I found God in the baby's faces and in the skies so blue and in many, many people. I found him in you. That's where I found God. We can find him everywhere if we but choose to see. 
if we can stop and smell the roses, if we can stop and see some of the beauty that he's created. You know, I've done a lot of traveling. I love to see the water and the sun. If you ever see the sun setting over the water, that's one of God's beautiful landscapes. Every beautiful landscape that has been done was done by God first. So if we can remember to watch the sun setting. I, I've been watching the sun setting more during this pandemic. And it's a beautiful, a beautiful landscape wherever you see the sun setting. The color of the clouds and the color of the sky is um, beautiful. So we, we have to stop and take time. Now we've been forced to. We've been forced to stop and take time. So um, I hope that you are encouraging yourself. I hope that you are staying healthy. And I hope that you are uh, not full of the spirit of fear as I was. Um, another poem from Let There Be Light that I want to share with you is called I Had a Dream. Now, I know that Martin Luther King was the I have a dream person, but Martin Luther King would be the first person to say that he did not want dreams to die when he died. So this is called I Had a Dream. I had a dream, a wondrous dream. It warmed me in the cold. It shined its light all over me. Its promise was foretold. Now, it picked me up when I was down, and it brought me through much more than I had thought that I could stand. It led me to a door, a door that wouldn't open to my knock, and I couldn't find the key. How to open up this door where all the promise be? How to find the magic lever that will set the jackpot free? How to pluck the golden apple off the golden apple tree? I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. I see the magic circles gleam. I can almost reach to touch it. Must I awaken from this dream? Well, we've had a rude awakening in these last few months, but we are still allowed to dream. We are still in charge of what we let in our mind and what we keep in our mind. I wanted to talk some more about how we treat people. How, how do we treat people, especially during this time when everybody's nerves are on edge and there are disagreements about whether to wear a mask and whether not to wear a mask? We should be mindful of how we treat people. Some, you know, um, treat others the way you wish to be treated. That's the answer for how to treat people. Treat others the way you wish to be treated. If we treat others the way we wish to be treated, Love thy neighbor as thyself. And if you're watching this show, you probably don't even need to hear this. But it's something that you can remember and pass on. Remember that what you put out into the universe is what comes back to you from the universe. It's called karma. And what you put out into the universe that comes back from the universe, don't think about the stars and the moon And when you think of the universe. The universe starts the minute you step outside of your door. So when you step out, try to uh, be positive and, and uh, kind. Romans 12 and 8, 12 and 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peacefully with all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peacefully with all men. Romans 12 and 10, be kindly affectionate one to another in honor, giving preference to one another. Proverbs 16 and 24, pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Now, pleasant words, I always knew that pleasant words were good for other people. It's nice for them to hear pleasant words. But did you realize that when you use pleasant words, you're also helping your own health? I was talking about health. When you use pleasant words, you are also helping your own health. The pleasant words lowers your blood pressure and lowers your heart rate 
and helps you not as much uh, uh, just as much as it helps the other person as does forgiving if you can forgive if you have anything against anyone forgive him this is mark 11 and 25 it's also in matthew and you know a lot of the things in the bible a lot of the sayings in the bible one of the reasons the bible is such a wonderful book is it has many different authors, but there's a lot of repetition. And this is one of the repetitions in the Bible. Forgive. Forgive. If you have anything against others, forgive. And they, so that God will forgive you. It's also in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So if you are a forgiving person, you're helping your health. Because holding on to Bitterness and hate and anger, that's not good for your health. So if you've got anybody you need to forgive, you can forgive them. You don't even have to wait for them to ask you to forgive them because that might not happen. But if you are the person who has hurt someone, can you ask for forgiveness and get it off your, your mind? You know, uh, forgiving will... Take a load off of your mind. So if you can be kind, if you can forgive, if you can use pleasant words, you'll find out that it'll help you just as much as it helps the, the other person that you're talking to. Um, Galatians 6 and 2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens, which is the reason for the Purvis Jackson Foundation. You know, I started this media uh, job because of the Purvis Jackson Autism Foundation that helps lower income children with handicaps because Purvis Jackson Jr. is handicapped by autism. But uh, I haven't talked much about the Purvis Jackson Foundation because during this pandemic has not been a good time for raising money and asking people to reprioritize because everybody is going through a lot. All over the world, everybody's going through something. So um, th this, the Purvis Foundation that is based on bearing the infirmities, the, the strong can bear the infirmities of the weak and bear ye one another's burdens. Now, if you can't bear somebody's burdens, at least don't add to them. And don't add to their burdens. So it's about time for me to take a short break uh, please stick with me for more of a spoonful of comfort. And like I said, we need way more than a spoonful of comfort. But we all do have a spoonful of comfort. When I was 17 I ran away from home and from everything I had ever known. I was sick and tired, living in a town filled with narrow minds and hate. They used to laugh at me, their children called me names. I would run and hide, feeling so ashamed just for being born. Just a boy punished for a crime that was not mine. So Thank you so much for sticking with me for a spoonful of comfort. And like I said, I know a spoonful of comfort is not nearly enough nowadays. We need a whole waterfall of comfort. But we have to comfort and encourage ourselves. And I was talking uh, before the break about how to treat people. How do you treat people? How do people treat you? When I was teaching, we were taught that we bring the weather into the classroom, that if we come in as a teacher and we are sunshine and smiles, that's the kind of uh, day we'll have. But if we're not, if we are uh, a, a thundercloud, then we change the weather in the classroom. So remember, you take your weather with you wherever you go. And I know there are disagreeable people. They are part of life. But 
You can agree to disagree. You can disagree without being disagreeable. You don't have to see eye to eye to walk hand in hand. So there are some things that are not even worth your getting your blood pressure uh, upset about. A lot of people are full of drama and they want to drag you into their drama. You don't have to let them drag you into your drama. And you don't have to straighten everybody out. Some people are just going to be crooked. When I was trying to uh, cure my son, I thought I could cure him. I opened the uh, Bible to a scripture, that who the Lord hath made crooked, who can make straight. And that helped me to accept my son as the person that he is instead of the person that I wanted him to be. So uh, if you see someone who's being disagreeable or who's being wrong, you don't always have to correct them. You can just let them be. Because like I said, what goes around comes around. So what comes into your life um, is part, part of what comes into your life is what you yourself have brought into your life. And uh, Psalms 42 and 5 says, why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Well, we know why we are downcast. We know why we are so disturbed. But put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him. I will yet praise God. So if you are disturbed, if you're miserable, you don't have to make other people miserable. You do not have to uh, deal with other people. Sometimes you can just go to a quiet place yourself and either pray or read or whatever comforts you. So um, when you're disturbed, do you have to disturb others? No, no, you don't have to disturb others. And I want to, um, another scripture that I want to remind you of is Ephesians 6 and 18, above all, take faith as your shield, for it will quench every burning missile that the enemy throws at you. Above all, take faith as your shield, for it will quench every burning missile that the enemy throws at you. I have to remember that. I have to remember to keep the faith. There's a gospel song, Keep the Faith. You're in the master's hand, and the master has a plan, so hold on and keep the faith. We need faith in such a time as what we're going through. Because if you already know the outcome, you don't need faith. If you already know what's happening, then you don't need faith. We need faith now. I still believe in Jeremiah 29, 11, even at my age, where the Lord says, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans for hope and a future. Here I am at age 81, and I still believe in that scripture for my life. Uh, Romans 8, 24 and 25 says, For we are saved by hope, but hope seen is not hope. For if you see it, then why do you hope for it? But if we hope for that, that we don't see then we do with patience wait for it. And I will admit, I did not always wait with patience. There were times when not only did I wait with pa not wait with patience, my faith was as a grain of mustard seed. What's smaller than a grain of mustard seed? But God always, always affirmed his scriptures. I'm here to tell you, that the words of the scriptures will be affirmed in your life if you believe and if you follow God's instructions. That's what the Bible is. It's a book of instructions, a blueprint for how to live your life. It's also history, stories that we need to know about uh, what went on many years before we were born. The Bible is 2,700 years old, and it's still relevant. 
it is still relevant. You can still find a scripture that uplifts you and encourages you. And I tried to share with you the scriptures that uplift and encourage me. Because if you don't, don't rely on something else to encourage you, then that's not good for your health. You need um, things to help your health. So I, I, read with you, uh, I read with you a poem from um, my old book, Let There Be Light. But I want to read with, to you a poem from my new book, The Butterfly, which I have read before, but I want to read it again because while I'm talking about how to treat people, this poem is about how not to treat people. This is how not to treat people. Uh, and I did have a request to, to reread this. It's called The Snake. The snake couldn't slither. He couldn't hiss in his pit. He couldn't even hold his head up. He was sick. He was sick. He couldn't stick his tongue out. He couldn't rattle or roll. He couldn't stop shaking. He was so cold. He was cold. He thought he was dying, and then an angel appeared, and she said, I will help you, so dry up your tears. So she picked him up gently, and she took him inside, and she washed him and fed him and stayed by his side. If it hadn't been for her, he would surely have died. She doctored and nursed him until he was fine, and then she said, let us celebrate. I'll open some wine. And we'll make a toast to you and to me, a toast to our future, how great it will be. So she gave him the glass, and he bit her hand. He bit her hand. Through her shock and surprise, she said, I don't understand. I, I helped you. I nursed you. I sacrificed too. There was nothing at all that I wouldn't do for you. How could you hurt me? I thought we were friends. And he said, you knew darn well I was a snake when you took me in. So we have to be careful of the snakes. And if you're listening to this show, I don't believe that you, if you're watching this show, I don't believe that you are one of the snakes. The last poem I want to share with you is a poem dedicated to my son who is handicapped, who has been the ultimate challenge of my life, who has uh, taken me through more ups and downs than I ever would have expected, and it's called A Love So Pure. He, was the, he used to fight me, and he used to scream all night, but he grew up to be taller than me, and he, where, whereas I would grab him and hold on to him, he would hold on to me. Uh, so I'll just read you the, the first part of it. A love so pure that I am sure it's coming straight from God. This kind of love comes down from above and right into my heart. So he showed me a love that I had never expected. So uh, be kind to each other. Encourage yourself. Tune Tune in, oh, I have a new time. Tune in at 11 on Tuesdays on WHPR. I'll be seeing you at 11 on Tuesdays now. So thank you so much for tuning in to A Spoonful of Comfort. Everything I had ever known I was sick and tired 